Hi, I'm Dr. Greg Castello, Board Certified Family Practice with CostelloWellness.com, and today we're going to talk about the different FDA-approved medications for weight loss, and this is not instead of diet and exercise and personal responsibility, so please don't comment that you should diet and exercise. I'm having a medical discussion about what is available as a diet aid. Okay, the first drug just came out with the FDA called Sexenda. This is a pre-existing drug known as Victoza, a diabetes medication for injection, a GLP-1 inhibitor. We've got three different drugs that do the same thing. They decrease the emptying of the stomach so the food sits in your stomach longer, you stay full longer. It also sends a signal to your brain to cause satiety or tell you to stop eating. Um, we have weight loss absolutely established with this class of drugs including Bietta and Bidurion and Victoza and the manufacturer has gone to the FDA and got a second indication and actually available for use for weight loss regardless of diabetes. It's a higher dose, three milligrams, as opposed to the maximum 1.8 milligrams with Victoza, so it may be a little bit more effective than the pre-existing Victoza. It likely will not be covered by your insurance because it is a diet drug, not a diabetes medication. Uh, next on the list is a drug called Belvic, and this is a 5-HT2C uh, agonist or a serotonin agonist, and serotonin is a chemical in your brain that has to do with mood and energy and well-being. And it turns out when we stimulate this 5-HT2C receptor, it tends to be an appetite suppressant. So not an antidepressant, it is in the serotonin uh, mimicking family, but it hits a receptor very specifically in the brain uh, that affects your satiety. Uh, next is a drug called Zenical, also available over the counter as Ali, A-L-L-I. Uh, this is a fat drop dropping blocking medication, and when you eat fatty foods, you normally absorb them and calories in your body. When you take this medication, fat is not well absorbed, and it passes through the GI tract uh, undigested, and you have some oftentimes terrible symptoms of oil leaking and passing stool when you pass gas and uncontrolled uh, diarrhea because you have oil when you're Great grandma used to use castor oil to clean you out. Castor oil is a non-absorbed oil, so oil in, oil out. When you take uh, this medication, similar concept, oil in, oil out. The more oil you eat, the more oil you leak or lose out the bottom. The one benefit of this medication is, is if you do take it, you have to adhere to a very strict low-fat diet, and if you do, the side effects are minimized, and that more than anything else probably can cause weight loss as opposed to the actual amount of oil that you're not absorbing because it becomes intolerable in you know moderate quantities of oil. Uh, next we've got phenermine. This is a stimulant amphetamine medication. So phenermine, uh, methamphetamine, amphetamine, these are all stimulants. They make you jittery and shaky and nauseous and lose your appetite. This is a prescription uh, version of that. It can raise your blood pressure. It may have heart attack and stroke risk as a side effect. Another drug called Meridia, which was very similar, was taken off of the market because of the potential heart attack risk. Uh, they did leave Phenermine available on the market. My presumption is, is that because Meridia was a brand name medication, there were multiple lawsuits associated with it and the FDA took it off the market. Phenermine is $30, it's generic, there's multiple companies that make it. A lawsuit would be much more difficult and there are none or very few Phenermine lawsuits out there. It does remain on the market. I would use it with caution. Uh, next is a drug called Topamax, and Topamax is a seizure medicine, been around for a while. Um, it also helps treat chronic migraines. Um, it's well established that when you take this medication, it decreases appetite, and in fact, that can be a limiting uh, side effect of the medication. If you are underweight and take the Topamax, you may not be able to tolerate because of the weight loss. It has tingling and numbness of the hands as a side effect. You have to titrate from a very low dose uh, up very slowly so the side effects are not intolerable. Um, interestingly, there's a new combo medicine called Quizmia, and this is Topamax and Phenermine put together two in one. Uh, a new drug, relatively expensive because it is a brand name drug. Um, it has been tested and FDA approved, so the combination probably is okay. Um, you can go to the pharmacy and get generic Phenermine and generic Topamax for significantly cheaper than the Quizmia. So they did most of the work in the FDA approval, uh, but don't really have the ability to keep you from going and getting the generic, and you just take two cheap pills and of one very expensive pill. 
uh, one last prescription drug called Acomplia. It's a cannabinoid type 1 receptor blocker, so it's the opposite of marijuana, and it's established that marijuana stimulates appetite and hunger. And in fact, we give cannabinoids to people that have uh, wasting diseases like AIDS or cancer to stimulate their appetite. This is the opposite. So it blocks that cannabinoid receptor and is, it causes a weight loss or anorexia effect to it. Uh, it was approved in Europe and withdrawn uh, from the market because of side effects. It never did make FDA approval in the United States, so you can't get it here. What's interesting is, is that it actually may be a good smoking cessation drug, um, and the company Sanofi is actually doing trials right now as a smoking cessation, so they'll have to prove two things before we would see it in the U.S. One, that it actually helps you quit smoking, and two, that it actually is safe enough to be accepted. So we may see this in the future as a smoking cessation, different than Chantix or uh, Wellbutrin as a new type of drug for weight loss, but it has to be effective and it has to be safe, so that we'll, we'll see. Just listed a couple of other drugs. Metformin, well-established as a weight loss medication in diabetics. It has different effects on sugar and uh, metabolism and satiety and is can be very effective in diabetics. It can help in some non-diabetics to lose weight as well. It's inexpensive. Uh, lastly, SGLT2 uh, inhibitors. We talked about these before. These are diabetic medications that cause your kidneys to spill sugar and you can lose up to 300 calories of sugar a day in your urine. Um, can be effective for diabetics and non-diabetics. It only has the approval for diabetes. It does not have a weight loss approval, but that may be coming in the future. Uh, the major downside to the medication is because there's sugar in your urine that there's an increased risk of yeast infections and urinary tract infections because the sugar feeds yeast and bacteria. So this is a list of the available medications um, on label and off label available for weight loss. Um, it is not a substitution for diet and exercise. You always, always got to do that. But as a supplement or add on, these can be helpful, especially if you're a diabetic. The diabetic medications treat your diabetes and the metabolic abnormalities that uh, can contribute to your weight gain. Dr. Greg Castello, thanks.